Hello. Thank you for coming to listen to my presentation. Um, today I'm going to speak about the open source identity management solution called Midpoint and uh, uh, more specifically about its architecture. My name is Katarina Valikova and I work as a software developer at Evolveum. I'm one of the core uh, developer of Midpoint and um, what is Midpoint? Uh, Midpoint is identity management and governance uh, solution. Uh, we started with the Midpoint in, uh, in uh, 2011, and in the same year, the company called Evolveum was uh, established. Our company is self-funded, uh, so we don't have any investors. Uh, Midpoint has currently uh, around uh, 1 million lines of code, and uh, therefore I think that uh, it's quite amazing proje uh, product and also it has uh, amazing architecture. So I want to share uh, this architecture and uh, lessons learned and what, what we find out during developing this uh, product uh, with you. Uh, Midpoint is uh, written in Java. I think that uh, Midpoint is quite a mature project and well known. Uh, it has uh, quite a lot of deployments. Uh, you can see in the picture on the map uh, that uh, Midpoint is spread all around the world. At least we are, uh, there are deployments uh, uh, on every continent. So I mentioned that the Midpoint is uh, identity management and governance solution. So what does it mean? What is identity management? So if you look uh, at the picture, um, there is the uh, uh, there is the identity and access management on the picture. When I speak about the identity management, I speak uh, about the left side uh, of the picture. So starting with provisioning system and ending with identity repository. Um, the main goal of the identity management system is to uh, provide synchronization of data among different systems. So that's uh, the midpoint also. Maybe it would be better on some example. So uh, imagine that uh, there is the organization uh, and a new employee was hired to the organization. What do you need in this case? You probably will need to create accounts for the uh, new employee. You will need to grant him privileges, accesses to the right systems and right applications. So um, you have, you have, it's your choice if you will do it uh, manually or uh, with some automation system. And uh, identity management solutions are a system which can uh, which can help you with the automation of such system. So usually in the company there is some HR system and when the new employee is hired there is a, a new record about this employee created in the HR system. Then the provisioning system or identity management system can pull, the, pull this new record or he can find out that the new record was created and according to uh, different uh, policies and rules it can compute where everywhere the new user should have accesses. So identity management will uh, automate these uh, processes for you. Maybe you are now thinking that you don't need uh, identity management and you don't need any other product to automate this because you actually have some scripts which can uh, do it for you. Yes, you are right, you have scripts and they, they can do this and they can do this cheaply and quicker maybe. But then on the other side you have um, other use cases. For example, the employee was fired and then you need to revoke all the privileges. You need to delete all his accounts so there is uh, no security risk that this uh, employee can uh, sign in to any system. So uh, identity management product can do also this. And there is much more, uh, for example, reorganization and so on. So basically for me, identity management is everything related to managing identities, their accounts, their access rights and, and so on. Uh, midpoint uh, is... Uh, when we go back, there is also uh, the third component I forgot to mention, and this is access management. There is uh, um, 
Uh, there is very often a confusion between identity management because people uh, try uh, people usually imagine single sign-on solution under the identity management. But for me, identity, as I told, uh, as I said before, identity management is about managing identities, about creating, deleting, uh, updating accounts, about uh, uh, granting and revoking privileges. And single sign-on solution is about authentication, authorization, and and uh, auditing. It doesn't do anything with creating accounts and, and all these things. Uh, Midpoint has its uh, also web interface, so you can uh, see everything um, in the user interface. Uh, for example, this is a user details page where you can see basic user attributes, you can see uh, all the accounts user has, you can see assign assignments which user has, and so on. But Midpoint can more. Uh, Midpoint can also uh, synchronize and manage uh, not only user accounts, but it can synchronize and manage also the organizational structure, groups, uh, roles, and everything you can even imagine. For example, uh, there is a usual case that uh, many, or many organization doesn't have authoritative source for organizational structure. They maintain their organizational structure in some Excel sheets or some other text forms. Uh, Midpoint can also um, manage organizational structure. In, it can synchronize if you have some um, source of the organizational structure or more sources of organizational structure. It can synchronize this and, and uh, then uh, you, can, you can see it here and manage it from Midpoint. Uh, what is the benefit of Midpoint is that you can have more than one organizational structure. You can have, for example, functional organizational structure, project organizational structure, and so on. So you can have also some virtual uh, organizational structure, like you, you are starting a new project in your company and you need to settle up uh, some uh, structure here so you can use uh, also uh, for such case organizational structure. At the beginning, I mentioned that uh, Midpoint is not only identity management, but it's uh, also identity governance. So uh, Midpoint does more than just synchronize identities and organizational structure. It can uh, help you also with some uh, governance features like red certification. So if the user ha users have uh, correct access rights, uh, you can check this in some periods and and some all. Uh, midpoint support also delegation, auditing, and many more. Workflows, approvals, and so on. Midpoint started in 2011. Uh, it started as open source with the Apache 2.0 license, and it's still open source, and everything uh, is uh, on GitHub. So you can go there and look at uh, the source code. Uh, we are a team of five developers who are uh, currently developing Midpoint. And uh, since the beginning, we have at least two releases uh, per year. Uh, from the beginning, uh, we, um, <clears throat> we chose uh, the uh, evolutionary approach, which means that uh, we uh, develop and implement Midpoint uh, iteratively and incrementally. Uh, it means that even if we design new feature, uh, we design it uh, in f like to the future. Like we are trying to look uh, to the future two or three years uh, ahead, uh, and we are designing this feature like this. But when it comes to development, we develop just small piece of this functionality which we need uh, right now. So. Midpoint is uh, identity management and governance solution, and it was uh, designed uh, to be extensible, to be flexible, to be uh, maintainable, and to be uh, easily deployed. If you look at the picture, in the middle you can see Midpoint. It's a core engine where you have all the policies, there is everything, there are roles, there are assignments, there is everything needed for computations. So um, uh, Midpoint can uh, decide where to create the account according to policies which are configured. Uh, 
there are also other components like target system and source systems. And these are basically uh, systems which are connected to midpoint. So uh, some system which the midpoint where the midpoint should create the account and manage these accounts. The connection between midpoint and these uh, systems is made with the uh, identity connectors. I will speak about the identity connectors later. What I want to mention here is also that uh, Midpoint was designed to be uh, easily deployed. It means that if you deploy Midpoint, you don't need to program anything. You just need to configure the policies and the rules and the attribute mappings, but you don't need to uh, write any Java code. And yes, Midpoint is monolith. There are no microservices and nothing like this. But Midpoint architecture consists of several subsystems. Each sus subsystem he has its own responsibility. So for example, there is a repository subsystem. Uh, the main responsibility of the repository subsystem is to store everything around the identity objects. So to store users, roles, organizations, uh, assignments, uh, policies, and uh, everything what Midpoint needs to uh, to behave correctly. Uh, then there is a provisioning subsystem. Uh, its main responsibility is uh, to work with the accounts on resources. So to read the resource state, including some uh, uh, transport of change notifications, and uh, also maintaining uh, uh, local attribute cache. So basically, provisioning system is the one who is uh, communicating with the identity connectors, and so providing this creation on the target system and reading from the source systems. Then uh, there is a model subsystem. This is the most important subsystem in midpoint architecture. This is uh, this is subsystem where all the logic is. So this uh, this model uh, or this subsystem uh, does all the computation. So there is mapping evaluations. There are um, rollback evaluation, policy evaluation. So everything. Uh, it's a, I would say it's a head of midpoint, or it's a brain of midpoint. And then, of course, we have a graphical user interface as subsystem, which uh, responsibility is interaction with user, even um, end user, administrator, or any, any type of user. One uh, subsystem I didn't mention uh, at the beginning uh, is infrastructure subsystem. And its main or primary goal is to maintain a common data model and provide some uh, basic services like uh, logging, traci tracing, dependency ignition, and so on. This infrastructure sus subsystem is used uh, in, by all other subsystems. As you can see, uh, midpoint architecture is uh, uh, divided into some subsystems, and every subsystem has its own responsibility. Every sus subsystem has its uh, uh, well-defined interface. So if you want, you can also uh, exchange uh, our implementation with your own just by implementing the interface. Uh, midpoint architecture is also layered architecture, and uh, upper layer communicate uh, every time only in the uh, with the bottom layer. There is no like cyclic communication or something like that. Every subsystem is divided into some modules, um, as you probably thought that uh, midpoint has around one million line of code and. It would be um, more practical to have more modules uh, where the code is uh, structured. So uh, every of these components are uh, uh, connected with Spring Framework. And um, uh, these are also dependencies. When we started the midpoint, we started with some dependencies. The Spring was here from the early beginning. But there were some dependencies uh, that we chose because we thought that they are quite good for us. But later, we realized that they are probably not so good. So we replaced them or totally removed them. 
what we learned here was that um, when we were designing the architecture, we pay really attention and we uh, spend a lot of time um, drawing the diagrams and communicating about the about the architecture and data model and everything. And um, we want to prototype uh, quickly, or we want to start developing quickly. So uh, what we learned with these dependencies was that yes, they, they helped us very at the beginning. It was very good we used them because they speed the development. But after the after uh, midpoint was evolving, uh, we realized that some of these dependencies are not so good for us. So we decided to even replace them, or in some cases, we make our own implementation. But for you, maybe the recommendation is uh, when you start a project, yes, uh, use the dependencies, but use them carefully and have, have the plan B to be able to replace them later. As I mentioned, when we uh, started to, to make the midpoint architecture, uh, we uh, spend a lot of time with drawing diagrams, with communication, with uh, designing data model. And I think that this is very good because uh, we now, Midpoint has around almost nine years, and the architecture, I would say, it's the sa almost the same as it was at the beginning. At least these big parts, these big components are the same. Uh, of course, architecture is evolving because we are evolving midpoint and uh, we are implementing all these new features. So we are adding new things, new new pieces. But uh, the architecture which was at the beginning is still here. So, and the same is for the data model. We spend a lot of time. We uh, at, the, at the beginning we change it uh, many times, but then. Uh, but then we uh, came to the point where it was like stable. And yes, we are evolving this data model. We are st still um, improving it and uh, extending because when you are going to implement new feature, you have to extend your data model. But all the changes in the data model, we try to do uh, compatible. So uh, yeah. Uh, also helps with the deployments. When you want to upgrade to a newer version, you you don't have to be afraid to do it because there there is the compatibility in the data model. In midpoint, data model is uh, used everywhere in every layer. So. Uh, if you change the data model, you have to keep in mind that you have to change, you have to adapt the change on every layer. So from the beginning, uh, when we started Midpoint, uh, we started with a data model defined in schema. Uh, it was existing schema, obviously, and uh, we used the uh, JAXB for generating Java classes. Later, we found out that uh, maybe XSD schema is not the right for us, but there wasn't anything better, and uh, and so we just extended XSD schema. Let's let's call it <coughs> XSD plus plus. With this, uh, we gain some um, advantages, like now in. In current state, we are still using JAXB for generating uh, Java classes, but we are also parsing this uh, extended XSD schema to something we call Prism schema. And then we use this uh, in all the layers, in all the components. In the future, there is the vision that one day uh, there will be something better than XSD++ or that we will have time to um, to uh, design something and implement something, and that uh, we will um, we will also remove the dependency on JXB, and we will do the parsing and generating the Java classes by our own, or maybe there will be someone else who will do it, and we will use it. Um, I I mentioned Prism Schema, but so far I didn't mention Prism Object. So in midpoint, we uh, after some time when we realized that the pure XSD schema is not uh, enough for us, uh, we came with the um, concept of uh, Prism Object. Prism Object Prism is basically um, um, 
mechanism for data representation. Uh, it supports full schema, it supports uh, relative change model like uh, delta and patch operations, and uh, you, if, even if you are working with uh, prism object, uh, you are working uh, actually on the live data. So uh, you can imagine it like some uh, wrapper with additional information to generate it, uh, class or, or object, or basic uh, Java objects. So in the prism object, there is still present uh, this prism schema with full definition. So we know about the, um, if the property is multi-value or single value, we know uh, which, uh, if the property is string or integer or, or we know uh, almost everything about it because we have this uh, full schema definition available. What are the advantages or why we decided to go this way? Uh, one of the one of the purpose for this was um, that at the beginning of the midpoint we had this exist schema and XML representation of data. But after after some time there were some requirements also from customers that why we don't support JSON, for example. So now with uh, using this Prism object and Prism schema. We are able to represent data like uh, XML, JSON, YAML. These three formats are currently supported, and uh, it, f it gives us flexibility to the future that when someone comes with new data representation, we can, we can just uh, simply implement it and we will support it. <coughs> So also in our uh, user interface, you can switch between different representations. So um, Prism, or our structures, um, supports not only the static schema. What is static schema? There is a schema which is built in a midpoint. It's our common model, which is used across the whole, um, whole product and everywhere. So this is the complete, uh, this is the schema which we have uh, at the compile time. But, uh, of course, midpoint is an uh, integration tool, and uh, we cannot predict uh, all attributes which will be needed by any of customers, because every customer has its own environment, its own attributes, and its own um, uh, uh, policies, and so on. So also here, uh, we support uh, dy something like dynamic or super dynamic schema. Uh, we Every customer can uh, can define its own schema, and after 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 the schema is defined by customer, Midpoint can parse the schema and also operate with this schema, like with uh, with this compile time schema. Uh, Midpoint is, I would say, uh, the whole schema ever. The schema we use schema everywhere, and the big. Uh, or one of the big advantage of using this schema is also in GUI uh, graphical user interface. Um, for example, our the the most part of our graphical user interface is generated. It's a, there is a code functionality we generate the. Uh, uh, interface and without the schema and without all these information about uh, attribute types, um, multiplicity and, and others, we were not able to um, generate such uh, graphical user interface. And also uh, when the customer um, defines its uh, own schema, Midpoint just uh, process the schema and without any coding, the attributes from the schema are, design, uh, are uh, automatically displayed in uh, the interface, uh, user interface. Um, when, I, when I told that uh, we use schema everywhere, we, and that uh, the Prism object uh, supports the uh, delta and patch operations, um, for the relative change model, I didn't mention uh, deltas. Uh, midpoint, comp uh, midpoint operates uh, in relative mode. It means that uh, we don't care about the 
user or uh, about the object before the change and after the change. We are we are just uh, curious about the change. So what was what was really changed? For example, if you if uh, um, if you look at the pictures, uh, you can see. Um, Example of adding uh, the attribute. We, we don't care if the user has two, three, five employee types uh, attribute before. We just we just know and we just tell that okay, we need to add a new attribute uh, with value uh, new attribute employee type with value peer pirate. And um, at the end, after applying uh, this delta, the user will have all the attributes he should have and also when removing uh, the values. But without, uh, um, again, without knowing the schema, we probably won't be able to do this. Okay, um, at the beginning, uh, I uh, told that Midpoint was designed to be flexible, maintainable, uh, easily deployed. And it was also designed to be um, to to keep the data as much consistent as possible. What does it mean? It means that uh, we try to keep the data consistent, but uh, in identity management products and also in any other distributed environment, uh, heterogeneous environment, there is no possibility to have strong consistency. Because, okay, we can have transaction and we can have uh, consistency um, in our internal database. It's a uh, it's relational database, there is nothing to mention more. But there are some resources or some application where the transactions are maybe supported and maybe are some, uh, there are some maybe limitations, but there are systems which doesn't support transactions. So, so Therefore, I mentioned that we try to keep the data as much uh, consistent as possible, but sometimes, but sometimes, because sometimes uh, there is no other way. Uh, this is uh, something what we call uh, relativistic or eventual consistency. Uh, we want you to make sure that uh, at the end, the data will be consistent, but uh, there are situations or moments when they uh, maybe are not so consistent. But uh, Midpoint has, uh, or when we designed Midpoint, we have, uh, in a team, we had uh, people who had uh, experience with uh, uh, other identity management solutions. So, um, they they were aware about this, and uh, when we designed Midpoint, uh, we were designing it with respect to this uh, uh, eventual consistency. So Midpoint has uh, a consistency model. Uh, when, for example, um, you are going to uh, change some attributes or uh, attributes on account on some target system, and. Uh, while this change uh, come to the target system, the account disappears. Uh, what to do? Midpoint in such a case uh, knows that, okay, I should perform this modification on this account, but mm, this account doesn't exist anymore. So Midpoint look at the policies configured, and if the policy said that the account should exist, Midpoint will first create the account and then apply the changes. So uh, the same is uh, when uh, reading when uh, reading the account which disappeared at the moment. So Midpoint is going to target resource or contact target resource, target resource uh, uh, get the response that mm, I don't have such account. So Midpoint will create the account first and then uh, show uh, the user the account. And the user doesn't know, the user doesn't, doesn't even know that there was such thing at the background. There are no errors like uh, that uh, the whole system broke down because uh, the account uh, disappeared. And also, um, uh, the very usual use case is that um, you have a lot of target system connected to Midpoint, and uh, very often there are communication problems with or some some network problems. So 
uh, when when some research is not online at the moment when we are doing the provisioning to it, midpoint will cache the changes and postpone the execution and they'll execute the changes when the research is um, back uh, online. Um, and as a, as a safety net, we have a process we call reconciliation, which uh, put everything together, computes all if uh, computes and compare the results if uh, there is everything what should be. And if not, it will uh, repair it. Yes, uh, we started with XSD schema and we still use it. We use some extension. And the decision why we use this XSD schema is that in 2011 when we started there was nothing better. And we are not sure that it's now mm, uh, different. And yes, we use also namespaces and we use fully qualified names. And for us, it's crucial to have this because if we want to support these extension schemas from customers, we have to have namespacing. At the beginning, I also told that uh, Midpoint is communicating with connected system uh, with uh, identity connectors. So what are identity connectors? Midpoint, as an identity connector layers, uh, use ConID framework. There are several, several benefits for using this framework. Like uh, the connectors are not Midpoint specific, so it basically means that everyone who is using uh, this connector framework is, can use the same connectors. Uh, connector framework makes some convenient services like um, instantiation or isolations. For example, you can have two different versions of connector active at the same time, and this connector framework um, will take care about creating and destroying instances, pulling the instances, and so on. And at the beginning, it uh, was uh, it has a very great advantage, and it was that there were existing connectors, so we could um, concentrate all the power to uh, design and implement midpoint, and we couldn't take care about implementing connectors. So, but after some time, we also found out that uh, a lot of these connectors were old, or how to say that and uh, we decided uh, some of them to rewrite. As you can see, uh, or uh, oh, I forgot to mention that ConID framework is also open source. It's not our product, it's not uh, our solution. It's continuation of uh, previous uh, identity connector fr framework, which was uh, originally developed by Sun Micro Microsystems. And currently, this ConID framework is uh, maintained by several companies. I would say competing, uh, competing companies. Um, and uh, basically, this ConID framework uh, has uh, provides uh, two uh, interfaces, the ConID API and ConID SPI. ConID API is uh, the API uh, which is used by Midpoint. Midpoint communicates with connector using this uh, API, this interface. Um, but connectors uh, doesn't need to know and they don't know about this uh, uh, interface. Uh, what uh, needs the connector? Uh, they need to implement the SPI interface. And here we are, what are the connectors? Connector, are, connector is usually just protocol translator. It's usually a very simple piece of code, and it can be uh, it can be so simple, like like just uh, translating the attributes uh, which came from uh, ConID framework, or which ConID framework put to it to the native representation of the. Uh, uh, target application. Uh, as Midpoint has all the logic, 
uh, about computing the uh, attributes, values, and policies, and all these things, then the connector doesn't need to do this because connector just uh, get all the data, the final data, how it should look like on this target application. So this is also um, a big benefit of uh, midpoint that uh, all the logic is inside and you don't need to put it into each connector separately because uh, in some identity management solutions there uh, there is uh, logic in every connector so this is a really really i think uh, benefit uh, that the connector take care only uh, to translate the uh, attributes from con ID representation to the representation of target application or the native, uh, native representation. And uh, midpoint computes everything for the connector. And when I told that it's very simple, uh, it usually it, um, consists of these um, few methods you need to implement. So you need to implement the create operation. For example, uh, you will you will get some set of attributes, and then you you need to uh, translate it, for example, to LDAP add request or something like that. Uh, at the beginning. I, when I started to talk about midpoint architecture, I showed you that midpoint uh, architecture is divided into some subsystems. And every subsystem has its uh, own interface. It has also other meaning, and it, is, uh, it was also designed so uh, to be able to uh, make tests uh, or integration tests. In midpoint, we have a lot of uh, tests. Currently, it's around 8,000 integra mostly integration tests, if something like that. But um, these integration tests are written using uh, test ng framework. So it's your, they are written using unit test framework test ng. But uh, what is different uh, is that uh, uh, in this test, uh, embedded midpoint is, or the midpoint is instantiated like in embedded form. And you can also uh, instantiate uh, LDAP server, embedded um, LDAP server, uh, database, and everything. So this is very good because um, we, are, we do something we call test-driven bug fixing. It means that if some client comes to us that mm, there is a bug and we need you to fix it, uh, we don't fix it blindly, but we first uh, write the test. And usually not one test, but several tests to test different cases and then fix it. And therefore now we, are around eight, we have around 8,000 uh, 8, uh, tests. Mostly integration. Uh, now also we are uh, in the development of end-to-end -end of testing framework, and in um, the previous releases we also started to um, started to um, um, Selenium tests, but not by using Selen uh, ID uh, in the form of clicking in GUI, but um, we uh, developed some such framework, and we are we are writing this test, so using some API. <clears throat> and yes, we don't have so much unit test because it would be very expensive to maintain it. I mentioned that um, yeah, we are not uh, we are not modern and we are not hype and we are not sexy because we are we don't have microservices and nothing like that, but at least we have REST and uh, we have RESTful API, or at least we we uh, try to uh, try to have a REST API, but then it turned out that it's not possible to have a RESTful API. So we have uh, almost REST API, RESTful API, and then we have RPC-like uh, style um, API. And also in the rest, we support all three uh, data formats, uh, XML, JSON, and YAML. 
So, that's pretty it. Um, um, Midpoint is open source. It's, uh, it's implemented in Java. It has almost nine years, and we are self-funded, and we have great architecture because we are still alive and we are still able to uh, extend it and add new features. So Midpoint is amazing, remember, and thank you for your attention. <laughs>